up guys, j up here, and today I'm taking you through my creative process and a few little tips and tricks on how I make my mashups, A, quickly, and B, to sound good in a club. So let's get straight into it. The song that I'm going to make the mashup with is Hot Girl Bummer by Black Bear. So the key to this track is in F sharp minor, and the BPM is 65 BPM. And the track that I'm choosing to mash it up with today is actually in the relative major, which is A major. And that's a song called Make You Mine by Mike Williams. So now that you've picked the two records that you want to mash together, and you probably noticed straight off the bat that F sharp minor and A major, they are different keys. But something to take note of is A major is actually the relative major to F sharp minor. So they share a lot of the same keys in the, in the scale, except they just start on a different note and you'll be able to hear it once we actually start in getting into this mashup, but I wanted to start with a little bit of a, um, a tricky one, I guess. It, it's not so much tricky, but it's, it's just not sitting in the, in the one minor key, uh, just to show you guys that you can expand out on that. And there is some more bigger tricks and stuff like that that you'll start to learn as you go on. But for right now, let's get straight into it with these two, and I'll take you through my process of a, how to line the vocals up, and B, how to mix them in good, where to set your levels and stuff like that, because I find so many, I find some really good, really creative mashups, and then the drop will be super loud, or the breaks are super quiet, or the vocals aren't quite sitting right, and there are all these little factors that will actually put me off playing these mashups that I find in my sets, or I'll recreate them just because they're a cool idea, but they're just badly executed. So this is pretty much going to be a quick guide on how you can improve your mashup game. Okay, so let's get started. First things first, now that we're in Ableton, we are going to set the BPM to 128 BPM. And I'm just gonna tab across into the session view. First song I'm gonna drag in is Make You Mine by Mike Williams. And this record sits at 126 beats per minute. First things first we do is we change this from beats to complex pro and the formants all the way down to zero. Once you have that, let's just solo this record and we'll zoom right into the very first transient here. That's where we'll put a mark. See how it just starts to lip up just a little bit here? This to me is the very starting point of the record of where the very first kick starts is right on the front of that transient. So we'll put that marker in, right click that, set 1.1 here, right click again, walk from here straight. Basically, what I do then, zoom all the way out, zoom into the very last drop, and what I'm going for here is just where it starts to ramp up again, just like that very first transient at the start, this little ramp up here. I'm gonna put in a transient marker there, zoom back out, and drag it back. I find going to the closest whole number, generally, I it gets it pretty correct. So, best way to figure out if it's lined up is by actually putting on the metronome up here, and then I'll check it on the first drop. All sounding good there, so let's drag that to the start. Okay, so now we got that record in. So the next thing, that, like I was saying in the starting point, was that the Black Bear record is actually at 65 BPM. So as a little shortcut way of warping your acapella. See, this is where a lot of people go unstuck, is warping the acapella, but you'll find I usually either warp the acapella to the actual original track, but in this case, just to make things quicker for myself, uh, Castro actually did a mashup with this track. He's already warped his version to 128, so I'm gonna drag that in, and then I'm gonna warp our acapella to suit his warping that he's done for an editor already. Okay, so let's drag in that Castro mashup here, and I'm also gonna drag in the DIY acapella here. So starting on this, we're gonna do the exact same process we just did on the Mike Williams track. Zoom right in here, just where it starts to lip up a little bit, put a transient marker in there. Right click, set 1.1 here, and walk from here straight. Again, zooming out, straight to the end of the record, where the second drop should be. Just where this is starting to let ramp up a little bit here, transient marker in, and let's pull that back to the closest whole number, which happens to be 98. Um, next thing we do, which I could have done at the start or now, is change this from Beats to Complex Pro. Format zero, again. Okay, perfect. So now with solo on, we're just gonna check this record sounds in time. Do, I'm do, I'm do. 
Yep, so everything sounds in time with the metronome on, which is perfect. So next step here is we're going to warp this acapella to suit that. So then it should be just a process of deleting the castro one and we got a perfectly warped acapella for our mashup. So let's first off zoom in on this one and off the bat, we are going to go in we're going to change the complex pro format zero. We're going to pull back the front on that. And we'll just have a little listen to this acapella and where it sort of starts. Forget, for okay, so about here, we'll set 1.1 here and we'll walk from here straight. And again, what we're doing here is basically we're going to try and line up the record so it's in time with the cash record. Forget you and you and you. Okay, so that actually wasn't too bad. That was kind of close. Um, so now we just got to do these little tiny adjustments, little bit by bit. Forget you, and you, and you. You can actually hear there's a little bit of phasing, so that means that, you know, we're pretty close, and ideally when you absolutely nail the acapella and the timing is perfect, there will be phasing, and it's, it's just because the frequencies are trying to cancel each other out, and that's what makes that flanger effect. So, if you're getting that sound, and you're like, what the heck, that's what's going on. <laughs> you're getting it right. So... Perfect. Let's skip through this a little bit now and just go just before his pre-drop and we'll see how we're still lining up here. Okay, so obviously it's ran out a lot. So I'm just going to go in on here. Uh, I'm going to set up a little transient marker here and you can sort of zoom in and you can actually look at the waveform and you can sort of see just comparing these two. This to me looks like it needs to go back to there. So we'll push that. And let's just see how that went for lining up. Get up and throw it's actually pretty close. It's not bad. So, uh, yeah, this is just one of them little things that... This is where if you spend a little bit extra time, you're going to make yourself so much easier. You're going to just make the work easier for yourself down the track when it comes to it. So, basically, this is all I've done so far is I only need it to the first drop for right now. So I can forget about this half of the track for now. I just click zero on that to turn that off. And basically now we got that. I'm just going to rearrange some of this. So this Castro edit, we don't really need at the moment. I'm just going to drag it to the top and get it out of sight, out of mind, so we don't get confused. Okay, so basically now we need to figure out what we're going to do here and how this is going to line up with our record. Okay, so going back to that cash record again, we'll see where he's actually dropping, uh, where the drop is, I guess. So essentially, let's push this all the way here and line up the drop with our drop, which should be here. And we'll just check that. Perfect. So now let's drag that acapella along there. And basically, uh, we can have it going. So as you can see, that's pretty much lined up perfect. It does sound it does sound good, but me, I have a super short attention span, if you can't already tell by watching this video. Um, and basically, I guess for club play as well, we want to make this as quick as possible to get straight into the track. So what I'll actually do is I'll delete uh, a little bit of this section so we can just go straight into the vocal. So let's just drag these back now. Go 
attention. Okay, perfect. So that actually lines up really well, which is great. So that's gonna make this so much easier. So this is just by taking that extra little bit of time at the start to line it up. It makes your life so much easier when it comes to this. So now we have the issue of the acapella still does sound pretty average. So let's solo that out and let's try and fix some of these problems. So forget you and you. Okay, so the main thing when it comes to a DIY acapella is going to be off the bat, you sort of want to get rid of a lot of the low end. So let's go in here and let's grab an EQ8. And we're just going to do a simple low cut and we're just going to cut 100 hertz off the bottom. You and you. And then from there, let's get a compressor. So basically, I will go into more detail in some of my other videos, but for this one, it's just super quick, super quick guide. For people who are already semi-familiar with Ableton and already been playing around with it, and basically what we're doing with the compressor, uh, compressor is basically what we're doing is, is trying to squish it up. So in these DIY acapellas, there'll be some little peaks and stuff like that coming through, uh, just where it's, it's not done properly. So there'll be like some little low points in the vocal. So basically what we're trying to do is bring up the volume of the low parts of the vocal. So bring them up and then the high peaks squash them peaks down. So then we're left with like a nice consistent sound. So basically all I do when it comes to the compressor is you, I'll go into the threshold you, here and, you, and I'll usually like to find I the chorus because that's where it's going to be out loud. You, I I'll hate put your friends and they hate me too. I'm through. Okay, so I pretty much just pull the threshold down until the gain reduction starts to cut in a little bit here, and you'll see it here. You, I hate your friends and they hate me too. See, we don't want to go too crazy with this, especially, you know, rules are different, obviously, for, I guess, a mashup to actual production, but for mashups, I find just doing it this process, and then uh, let's then copy this one across. So if we created any more um mud in the low end it's just basically a copy paste of the eq8 that we already had on before the chain so that will that's um, actually level up your um, pretty nicely. so once you got that uh in there the other little trick i do with the diy acapellas because obviously i don't want to spend too much time on this this is just one of them quick things that i'll do in my hotel room before i go to a gig or something like that so i'm just going to put a basic a little bit of reverb on it uh not too much just dry wet down and it should be just enough to take hey, me to I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. And then just listen to what it actually sounds like with the record. So this is all take hey, me to I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. I'll go by my head and turn it up and go a different when it's Thursday night. They call this got that music every day late. They she be too thick in my friends are all annoying, but we go you and you and you. I'm a head to turn it up and throw attention. So basically, all we've done there is just grab that little drop hook again, just because there is a gap in there uh, for where the vocals would have been in the Mike Williams track, but. Luckily, we have the instrumental for that, so I've just chopped in that little pre drop fill. I go by my head, don't turn it up and throw a tantrum. So, basically, what I wanted to show you guys is how to do a mashup with only using Ableton plugins, too. So, notice everyone will have these plugins that we have used on here, they're all built into Ableton uh, by default. Okay, so another thing that I see a lot in these tutorials is actually putting on a limiter on the master chain. But you need to keep in mind that these songs have been finished, they're mixed, they're mastered, uh, they're already finished records. So it's not like when you're producing and you need to, you know, uh, <laughs> do all that. But, and essentially we're only putting an acapella over the breakdown. So really we're not like adding a lot to the track and it's already finished track. So just whatever you do, avoid the Ableton limiter on the master chain. Uh, you can try this one called Invisible Limiter if you want to get a third party VST. Um, and yeah, that one's pretty good. Uh, but other than that, honestly, I will just pretty much replicate the same pro process again for the second breakdown. 
and that will be the track. And then from there, I pretty much just go file and go to export audio video, and then make sure you have all your settings the same as this. So render track is the master. So everything that's turned on will be coming through. WAV sample rate 44100, bit depth 16, uh, and then pretty much going export from there. And that is how I will go through and make a quick mashup in a hotel room or wherever I am at the time. Uh, it's just very quick. Uh, if there's anything you didn't understand in this, and if I'm talking too fast, just let me know in the comments below and I'll improve on the next ones. And not only that, if you're actually interested in production and you wanna learn a lot more like this, and maybe I skipped over too many of the things that you're not quite sure on. So that is perfect because I am actually running a production course online. So you can sign up and basically it'll be taking you through in depth from the very first startup, from turning on Ableton for the very first time, setting up your preferences, shortcut keys, everything you need in an extensive eight week course, also offering some one-on-one -on -one production as well. So uh, yeah, send me a DM on Instagram and I shall get back to you there.